Hello there everybody, it's Sally here again and welcome back to another Tuesday Teaching Tips. And today it's part two of looking at polyrhythms. Now if you caught my Tuesday Teaching Tips last week, and I know a lot of you found that really useful, we were talking about how to play twos against threes, so do go back and check on that. And I'm going to show you today um, just sort of a basic introduction to how to teach threes against fours. I think if you want the real deal on this, the, the place to really look is um, at practicing the piano, Graham Fitch. Um, and I think you'll find if you go to YouTube, he has lots, uh, at least one really, really good video where he goes into this in really some depth. So I'm just giving you the beginner's version, okay? So teaching threes against fours. Now if you remember when I was talking about teaching twos against threes, we I was saying that first of all, the student needs to be able to subdivide. Now, obviously threes against fours is at quite an advanced level so you're not going to be doing this probably with a grade four grade five you know um, intermediate student it is going to be advanced so by that point and I will open up my piano after all at that point they do need to be able to subdivide really quite easily and if you remember last week I said they need to be able to subdivide by two so we were doing a, what I call a rhythm scale with this and then with the same beat we had, they were subdividing by two. And then with that same beat, subdividing by three. And then subdivide by four. Etc. And that would be a four octave scale. And they should be able to slip really easily in and out of those different subdivisions of that same beat. Okay, that's your very first thing. So now I'm going to go down here. So threes against fours. The question is, can you count to 12? And can you get your students to count to 12? Because if you can, then you're halfway to it. Because of course, both three and four subdivide, don't they, by 12. So if you think about 12, divided by three and that gives you four and if you divide uh, 12 by four that will give you your three so counting to 12 is the first stage and you're going to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and if you think of it like a grid and you could write out the numbers and then sort of uh, what Graham Fitch suggests is little crosses, which I've I've done in the past, which is really useful. So it's going to be together on one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Together, two, three, right, left, six, right, eight, left, ten, eleven, twelve. I did pretty well at that. Just missed the ten, didn't I? Here it is again. Together. Right, left, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and you have to do that over and over and over again, counting aloud. So if you remember back in twos against threes, we was I was talking about how important it is cognitively to say the together, right, left, right. Um, I think this doesn't quite work on this one because it's just too complex. I have been trying that out, as you could just hear me then, counting the numbers as well, um, as well as the together, two, three, right, left, but then you forget the number that you're on. Um, so another way that you might attempt it is to go together, the two, three, right, left, one right one left right two one two or something like that i think that's a bit complicated as well so i'm going to stick with together two three nine, sorry one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and practice it walking along you know walk 12 beats and see if you can do this on your legs as well all sorts of different ways that you can practice um if you want some words it's not a nice cup of tea this time, but um, what atrocious weather, what atrocious weather, what atrocious weather. Together, right, left, right, left, right. Together, 
right, left, right, left, right. What atrocious weather. What atrocious weather. And you can see that you get the feel of it once you've done the numbers, but the numbers are the first section and then putting in that little phrase, what atrocious weather can be the second thing. So you've sent your student away, they've practiced that. And of course, you know, we were talking last week as well about a concept led rather than repertoire led. So make sure that you know that if this is the piece they're going to be learning, we'll learn this concept well in advance actually of trying to implement it in a piece. And then when it comes to trying it on the piano, um, again, still not with the piece, but take just the five notes, a pentascale here on C, take a tetrachord in the left hand. So the left hand's doing four notes, C to F, the right hand's doing five notes. And you could count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, lots and lots of times. And then when you get into that flow, you can go back to the what atrocious weather, what atrocious weather, what atrocious weather, what atrocious weather. What I'm learning, I'm having to continue saying that really, really uh, firmly in my head. And then, of course, you can then start to move that into the repertoire that you're particularly learning. You know, the uh, Chopin Fantasy Impromptu is a very, very good example. And, you know, if you're doing that, let's say, once you get the, the threes against fours, then, you know, um, you're pretty set for the piece, really, aren't you? So you might start with the first bar where their hands together. It's not the easiest one because you start on the qu semi quaver rest. So I'd put in an extra A. What atrocious of course it's really slow it's really painful but they're still practicing it hands separately probably up to speed you know up to speed not that speed um but their hands together will be really very slow So, how to start the beginner's guide to threes against fours, making sure first of all that your student is really familiar with the subdivision of the beat, um, and then getting that grid of 12 and doing the subdivisions as we, I was showing you earlier, of counting to 12 and which hand goes where, um, and then using, getting a little bit more fluency with, fluency with what, atrocious weather that would be the third part doing a c major sort of mini scale between the hands still to get it very steadily onto the piano and then transfer it into your particular uh, piece or repertoire that you're learning well i hope that's been helpful and um, certainly made me really really think through my threes against fours so thank you again anastasia for asking that question happy teaching i've got to go and do some now hope you have a good afternoon morning evening wherever you are in the world thanks for watching bye bye <laughs>